If the title of this video brought you here, let me hit you with a big disclaimer right up front. I love this movie, and I'm just picking on it. I think it's fundamentally a goofy feel-good film, albeit one that makes you think about life and existence a lot, and it's clear you're not meant to read into the individual plot points, nor the time travel mechanics, all that much. Watching about time feels like putting on my favorite sweater. If I'm ever feeling down, I can settle in for a cool 123 minutes of laughs, with a few poignant sad moments thrown in for good measure. Movies don't usually make me cry, but this one gets me every single time. If you're going through a tough time in your life, I really can't recommend this movie enough. It also seems like it really flew under the radar. There are some big name actors in this one, including Rachel McAdams, Margot Robbie, General Hux, that one dude from Lovesick who always plays the same dirty friend character, uh, Vernon Dursley, you get the idea. The characters are fantastic too. Tim and Mary are great, Tim's parents both deliver scenes with real emotion and wit, and Tim's other family and friends are so distinct and clever that the film just flies by. Just to name a few, we've got his quirky, but not like lol so random, sister Catherine, nicknamed Kit Kat. Not to mention Uncle Desmond, whose actual deal is unclear, but who adds some surprising emotion to the film. Plus a host of other characters who make the very most of their screen time. Okay, just so we're clear, I adore this movie, and I'm just having some fun. Please go watch it if you haven't seen it before. Or honestly, this video can't really convey how it feels to watch this movie, so even if it's spoiled for you, you can still give it a go. This bad boy is on Netflix in the US as of the time this video is posted, so you can go watch it right now. Bob's your uncle. I'll wait. Full spoilers for About Time Fall. Anyway, now that the squares are gone, let's discuss the ways that About Time introduces some pretty intense implications, despite the fact that it's a romantic comedy slash drama film. <laughs> first scenes in this movie is the most British 2000s scene imaginable. Our awkward but likable protagonist, Tim Lake, is at a New Year's party. He likes a girl there, but he gets too nervous to kiss her. All well certified 2000s hits like Mr. Brightside by The Killers play in the background. In many ways, Tim is the classic British young man protagonist, not so unlike Johnny Flynn from the aforementioned high quality British TV show, Loves It. In other words, he's goofy, but always playing situations to his advantage. He's attractive, but awkward, and he's a loyal friend and romantic partner, when it's convenient for him. He's relatable and easy to cheer for, but he's also sort of self-centered and isn't always the best person. But I digress. Back to the film. The morning after the party, Tim's extremely likable father lets him in on a little secret. The men in their family have the ability to time travel if they go in a dark little closet and concentrate real hard, which also feels extremely British somehow. This is a light-hearted movie, at least in the beginning, so this reveal isn't given a lot of weight. Of course, Tim goes back to the party and kisses the girl this time. Why does all of this sound so familiar? Now, this is all fine and good. Tim initially uses his ability for innocent enough things, and the film shows us that time travel isn't a magical fix. For example, he can't make Margot Robbie's character, Charlotte, fall in love with him. She's a friend of Kit Kat's, and she spends an entire summer with the family early in the film. When Tim makes a move on Charlotte the night before she leaves, she tells him he should have spoken up sooner. So he goes back in time to earlier in the summer and tries again, only to have her tell him to try again at the end of the summer. I really like this, and it's our first lesson. Life lesson. Some people just won't be attracted to you, even if you say and do the exact right things. Things do get a little iffy from here. So Tim's living on his own now, and he and his friend go to one of those pitch black restaurants. I'm not going to try and pronounce the name, but here you go. The two encounter a pair of women, and Tim hits it off with Mary, played by Rachel McAdams. They obviously can't see each other, but luckily they're both total hotties, so it turns out just fine in the end. They have a moment outside, and Tim promises he'll call Mary and see her again. But things don't go that way. Tim's cranky housemate is a playwright, and one of the actors in his play forgot the most important line on opening night. So Tim goes back to fix it, erasing his night with Mary. He manages to track her down, but of course it's awkward because she doesn't remember him at all. Tim stumbles through the encounter and discovers along the way that Mary has a new boyfriend. But he's the kind of guy we're not supposed to like because he's sort of pretentious. So Tim finds out how they met and devises a plan to make sure Mary never meets her boyfriend in the first place. That sounds pretty bad when I put it that way, but come on, Tim is our scrappy protagonist. But she was happy though, right? Was he wrong to do that? I feel like that might be wrong. Life lesson, all's fair in love and war. 
This also brings up the topic of Tim's dad. The record will show that I love Tim's dad, and he might be my favorite character in the entire film, but if he's had the ability to time travel for so long, how often has he been dishonest with Tim's mom? Has he avoided fights by going back in time to make sure they never happen? And that's just the most basic example. Maybe that seems like a sinister thing that only evil people would do, but wouldn't you avoid more arguments with your significant other if you could? Yes, it would be wrong, but what if you just had a very long day and you were desperate to avoid the conflict and just relax. Also, even though Tim and his dad seem to be morally upright for the most part, Tim tries to do this to Mary in the movie. Okay, he's technically going back in time to prevent a manuscript from getting destroyed by their daughter, but isn't that a lot of power to hold? Life lesson, the best way to avoid conflicts is going back in time to make sure they never existed in the first place. Things get even worse from here. As I mentioned, Tim and Mary end up getting married and having a daughter named Posey, but not before Tim comes, like, extremely close to hooking up with Charlotte, who's now kind of into him. It doesn't seem like Tim uses time travel to woo her or anything, so fair play on that front, but doesn't that cancel out the first life lesson? I know what you're thinking. Of course people can change their minds, right? But this is still a tough one for me. Charlotte was decidedly not into Tim when she stayed with his family, and what's really changed since then? He looks more or less the same, and he still has that sort of goofy and awkward thing about him that was doing nothing for her just a few years before. As a side note, the scene where Tim decides not to go into Charlotte's room is played like a really triumphant moment, but he came extremely close to hooking up with her. He didn't technically cheat, but that's about as close as you can get, right? Anyway, Tim's sister Kit Kat is going through a difficult time in her life, and crashes her car as a result of driving drunk. It's one of the first really serious moments in an otherwise lighthearted film. Of course, Tim goes back in time to prevent the accident from happening. He decides to tell Kit Kat about his powers and brings her back to the party at the beginning of the film to make sure she doesn't end up with Jimmy, who has always been sort of slimy and unkind to her. But here's the kicker. When he returns to the present, Posey isn't Posey anymore. In this timeline, he and Mary had a completely different child, this time a son. Okay, so this power is extremely dangerous, right? Sure, in the movie Tim is able to fix things, and he and Mary are able to help Kit Kat put her life together after the car accident. But okay, just for starters, what if Kit Kat had killed someone in the accident? Now Tim, who's ultimately just some guy, has to choose between that person's life and getting Posey back. How could anyone be trusted to make that decision? And that's just the tip of the iceberg. What about the fact that changing the timeline in a minor way made Tim have a completely different child? Would we not then assume that every time he time travels, some number of people now have entirely different children, or at least very different lives? Life lesson, hey, as long as you're happy, right? These life lessons are getting out of control. Luckily, About Time brings it all back down to earth in the end. Tim initially finds peace in living each day twice, once with all the normal stress and anxiety, and once knowing how everything is going to happen, just going along for the ride. He also learns to be selfless. This is the part of the movie that gets to me the most. Tim's father is diagnosed with terminal cancer, and he passes away only weeks after Tim and Mary are told about it. But Tim can time travel, of course and he doesn't feel the loss quite as much because he can go back in time to visit his father while he was still alive. It seems like this could continue indefinitely until Mary expresses that she'd like to have another child. Tim is initially reluctant to have another kid because it will mean he can't see his dad anymore, but he agrees to try because he knows how much it means to Mary. In the end, they do have a third kid. Tim decides not to use his powers anymore, choosing instead to treat each day as if it were one that he had come back to on purpose. Do you see why this film makes me cry. In its humble 123 minutes, it communicates so much about life and about the importance of making peace with your past and your current circumstances while still striving to make the most out of every single day. So I guess what I'm saying is, About Time is a nearly perfect movie and you should try to forgive yourself. Thanks for watching! Next time we're back to horror, so let me know which movies I should cover next in the comments. Also, I'm going to keep making these videos, so I'd love it if you subscribe. Thanks guys! Alright, just a few quick ones. 
It's not the first time a movie has done something like this, but I love the time-lapse sequence where Tim and Mary are going through the underground station on a bunch of different days while the band plays that How Long Will I Love You song. It covers a lot of ground in their developing relationship over a really short period of time without feeling rushed. When Tim goes back in time with Kit Kat, she immediately knows that she's with Jay when they return to the present, but Tim is completely unaware that he and Mary had an entirely different child. How is that possible? There are a lot of things about the time travel in this movie that don't really makes sense, but this isn't that kind of video, so we'll leave it be. Seriously, please go watch this movie. My summary here doesn't even begin to do it justice, and it's truly one of my favorite movies. Okay, thanks again. See you guys.